Hey guys, welcome to another edition of An Engineer's Opinion, Terrible Kickstarter Edition. This time around, I'd like to talk about the Xano drone that has recently been cancelled. Let's jump over to their Kickstarter page. So here is their Xano Autonomous Intelligent Swarming Nano Drone. Now the swarming part bothers me. Swarming in generally involves multiple drones and most people probably aren't going to have a lot of drones to actually swarm. Most people aren't going to have any drones because they canceled it. But let's move on. So they promise, you know, just this tiny little drone that's smartphone controlled. That's not too crazy. And they're saying, you know, it's going to follow you around. It's going to have all these cool camera features. None of this is really too terrible to consider in such a small package. I mean, it's about the size of the guy's hand. Now, it's not impossible. They obviously had a working prototype. And everything seemed kind of okay. I mean, you know, all this stuff they're talking about is definitely doable. But then if you actually start looking at the specs, so they say that they're going to use a 330D MIPS processor. That's a 32-bit. Now, this is a 32-bit pick, basically. And to give you an example here, this 330D MIPS is somewhere up here on my scale. So 330 MIPS, you're going to be somewhere at, uh, let's say, a fifth, a sixth of an Intel Pentium 3. Your Snapdragon 810 that's running in your phone right now, it's 25 times more powerful than this. And they're going to be doing basically blob tracking to track you as you walk. This is this is not going to happen on 330 DMIPS. That's million instructions per second. Yes, it's a very high number, but when you're doing image processing on a moving picture, never going to happen. But the rest of their drone flying around with a smartphone controlling, following your GPS coordinates, that's doable. It's not going to be the speediest processor. It's not going to have much room for overhead, but it's doable. But this image processing is never going to happen at such a low processing speed. So eh, that should have been a little bit of a red flag. But even if they did everything else they said they were going to do without the blob tracking and stuff, it still would have been decent for they're at 215 euros or pounds or whatever that crazy symbol is so you're at like 400 bucks something around there so not terrible it would have been really cool to have such a small one but people should have looked at the specs and there should have been some red flags right away that says you know this is probably isn't gonna happen but, you know, all in all, this one kind of really snuck up on people because it looked fine, they had this working prototype, and then the money just disappeared. And that's kind of the danger of the Kickstarter, and people aren't going to see this money back. So, do your homework for projects if you want to back something on Kickstarter. I've backed probably a dozen and haven't had any problems, but I've mostly backed games, uh, either video games or board games, so I really haven't had too many issues, but I've also done my homework to make sure that the people I'm buying stuff from are reputable and what they're promising seems reasonable for the amount of money I paid and the volume that they're getting. So if these guys would have stayed around, you know, a couple thousand, they might have been okay, but they're promising tens of thousands of units and the sheer volume overwhelmed them. Or they just were a scam to begin with and they took their $3.2 million and took off. And that's the risky run. And that's an engineer's opinion. 